In this video, we'll look at the Defender for Server options and compare the two plans that are available. Then we'll look at the file integrity monitoring, just-in-time access, and vulnerability assessments. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Azure. So let's take a look at one of the specific enhanced version plans in Defender for Cloud, which is Defender for Servers. Now you could go back into the uh, environment settings if you need to enable or look at the other plans that are available. Uh, we'll assume that that's already enabled for right now. Uh, and we'll actually go take a look and just compare kind of the two plans that are available. Defender for Servers is one of the interesting ones uh, because it actually has plan one and plan two. Uh, and so there's feature difference and a cost difference between the two plans uh, and the, the capabilities that you can use there. So here's um, just in the documentation around the, the two plans, plan one and plan two. And there's a, a table in the documentation that just lists out the, the plan feature differences between the two. Um, so both plan one and plan two come with some integration with Defender for Endpoint. This gives you uh, attack service reduction, um, EDR for reporting um, and as part of the overall XDR solution that Defender for Cloud provides. It includes that licensing for Defender for Endpoint so you can protect the resource. Um, threat detection at the operating system level uh, and a just you know unified view. It shows up both here in the Defender for Cloud portal uh, as well as Defender for Endpoint, assuming that you, you use the agent and you uh, enroll the resource there. So um, those are all the plan one features. Those are included in plan two, but then specifically for plan two, kind of the um, plus version of uh, Defender for Servers, network level threat detection, um, vulnerability assessments and, and management add-ons here. So you can do vulnerability assessments both for, um, for Microsoft resources or Microsoft vulnerability assessment, as well as a, a license for a Qualys agent. So you, um, you don't have to have a separate Qualys license or account, you can run the, the Qualys vulnerability assessments on your VMs directly from Defender for, uh, for Servers or Defender for Cloud. Some uh, adaptive application controls, if you want to be able to monitor and uh, define the applications that you can install on, on that resource, on that virtual machine, you can define that here. Um, if you're using log analytics for uh, log ingestion, like a competitor to, to Splunk, you get 500 megs um, every month towards that VM in the log analytics workspace. So it saves you some money um, on your, your log ingestion costs. Um, if you need administrative access to a virtual machine, it includes uh, a license or the ability to use just-in-time VM access. So then going back to that management group discussion, um, in a previous video. So if you need remote access, SSH, RDP access to a virtual machine, um, just-in-time access gives you a, a, a way to secure that a little bit better rather than just having those ports open. Um, adaptive network hardening to be able to filter traffic with those NSGs. Uh, another big one is file integrity monitoring. So if you need to monitor uh, any file level or registry changes, um, File level for both Windows and Linux VMs. Registry is obviously just Windows. But if you need to monitor, you know, if, if anything changed on any type of system file, application file, um, it uses, uh, it takes an MD5 hash of that file when you enable this and then sends a report, sends an alert um, anytime it detects that file has changed or that registry value has changed. So those are kind of the um, the, the big things, we'll look at the vulnerability assessments, we'll look at firewall integrity monitoring um, and just-in-time access because those are kind of the more popular um, use cases or features for Defender for Servers. So we'll hop back over to the portal. Uh, again, to you know change or look at the plan that you're using, it's in um, environment settings. If you just want to go and enable this or choose plan one or plan two, um, we'll have to go to the subscription and select it all these management groups here where my subscription is. Um, but we'll click on the name of the subscription. And then the first tab here is Defender Plans. Um, Defender for Servers, here's where you can just enable it on or off. And then if you want to change the plan, there's a change plan button where you can select either plan one or plan two. Uh, again, the, the selection here is for all of the servers in the subscription. This is where, again, kind of a good governance and management strategy is in place um, or needs to be in place 
so that you're not be not um, paying for things that you're not going to use in a development environment or in a QA environment. Because anything you select here is going to be for all VMs in this subscription. So I already have the plan two enabled. We'll go back to the kind of the main Defender for Cloud page here. Uh, and most of these you can see under workload protections. So we'll go to workload protection. Uh, and here's where kind of see the same format in a different view. Um, here's what Defender for Cloud is covering, um, whether it was on or off in environment settings. Uh, and then if we scroll down a little bit, the advanced protection, here's where we can uh, look at some vulnerability assessments, look at just-in-time VM access, um, that adaptive application control, monitoring the applications that are installed on those VMs, um, and file integrity monitoring. Um, so we can start here at file integrity monitoring. This requires a uh, an agent to be installed on the VMs. Um, the, the current agent is the Azure Monitor Agent, AMA. And this allows, uh, again, the agent will go out and look at the, the files and the directories that you add here. And if I um, sort these by subscription, I'll select my default workspace here. You can take a look at this one. Um, so it's going to, for the, the, the files, the registries, the directories that you configure, it'll go out and do an MD5 hash of the, the resources going to store that information in the log analytics workspace that you select. So I just have the default workspace selected here. Uh, and then anytime it detects a change to that file or that registry value, it's going to report it back. And so you have the ability to go in here to the settings uh, and, you know, modify all of the change tracking. So here's all of the default things. Um, here's the default Windows registry values, the default Windows file. So anything related to the system and the startup. Um, default Linux files, uh, you can add in file content changes if you actually want to track um, individual like character changes, what was you know, maybe added or review, uh, removed from a configuration file, from an INI file. Um, it'll send that to a storage account that you have to configure. Um, and then any Windows services, you know, if they've been uh, stopped, added, anything like that, you can just set the frequency of how often that's reported back to this log analytics workspace. So here's the you know underlying configuration for file integrity monitoring. Um, if we go back and look at this subscription here, this has a, a few samples of you know when that occurs. So say a registry value changed or um, a, a file changed. Here's a, a simulation VM. Here you'll see that it's got 15 files, a little over um, 1,600 total changes to the registry. We select this VM. Um, it'll give us the, the 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 KQL query. Here's all of the registry values that have been added on this machine. And so, of course, now we can you know, maybe manipulate the KQL a little bit, try to determine um, who made the change, what the value was, you know, all the the, the different things around um, around that change. And so it doesn't matter whether it's the, the registry, a directory, a file, as long as it's defined in that setting, um, then you'll be able to, to see that here. It goes to the configuration change table in that log analytics workspace that you select. So that's um, file integrity monitoring. That's a, a big part of an XDR solution, being able to, to say that, you know, for any of your application files, for any of the core system files for the operating system, uh, that you're monitoring that. Go back to uh, workload protection here. Um, one of the other ones was just in time VM access. So again, if we've got um, virtual machines that we need management port access, so either SSH or remote desktop, um, instead of just putting that port number or allowing that port in uh, a network security group, just in time access allows us to uh, based on Azure RBAC, so there's some permissions involved here as well, to say that if someone has permission to go and connect to this virtual machine, instead of RDP or SSH just being open to the internet at all times, the, the person that's trying to remote access to this VM has to go first here to, um, 
two defender for cloud. So here's three VMs where it's configured. Maybe select the VM that they're trying to connect to. Click request access. And so then assuming that they have the appropriate permissions to do this, that they have the RBAC permissions. When we request access, we can say that, okay, uh, we're going to add 3389 because this is a Windows VM. Um, we're going to you know, turn this on for three hours is the default setting here. And so for the next three hours, 3389 uh, will be allowed only from my current IP address. And so the Azure portal is, you know, looking at my IP address right now. It's got that, you know, just because I'm connected to the portal. It's going to add a, a very specific network security group rule to say that the source of my IP address to the destination of this one specific virtual machine, we're going to allow our uh, remote desktop and then delete the rule after the next, after three hours. So this is a pretty secure way of still allowing just traditional remote desktop or SSH to a virtual machine um, without just having the management port open to the internet. Uh, the rule disappears, you know, gets deleted after the time period, uh, and then everything is still tracked. If you want like an audit trail of who went and added this, this shows up, this action shows up in the activity log uh, that someone went in and requested access. You can provide justification. You know, if you've got a, maybe a best practice would be to put in like a ticket number or, you know, whatever the, uh, the reason that you were connecting to that VM was for. So that's, um, just in time access, another, um, enhanced benefit of Defender for Cloud. Last thing we'll look at here is vulnerability assessments. So again, with, uh, with plan two, you, uh, have the ability to go in and configure vulnerability assessments. That's just one of the general recommendations that you should have this enabled. Um, with Plan 2, you have two options, either the Microsoft assessment uh, or the Qualys assessment. Um, here's uh, VMs that you know this has already been configured on. Um, if we don't have it enabled, it'll come in and tell us machines that, uh, that they're not configured on. And so if we just look at Workstation 13, um, we can go to Defender for Cloud here on the individual VM. It'll come back with recommendations, security incidents, alerts. Um, and we'll be able to, to run the vulnerability assessment um, on those specific VMs. So that's another uh, enhanced version uh, or capability in Defender for Servers. So that's, um, you know, kind of the... The main features of Defender for Servers, obviously it comes with uh, a few other things that we saw in the documentation, but those are the, the things that I get asked questions about a lot and are kind of the, the key feature of Defender for Servers. If you learned something new today, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel to learn more. I stream every Friday afternoon on Twitch if you'd like to come by and ask questions. Uh, thanks for watching.